Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's webinar, Check Up on Your Debt. My name is Dr. Chelsea Foss, and I'm a dentist and the Senior Health Policy Analyst with the ADA's Health Policy Institute. On behalf of the ADA and the ADA FDC Virtual Connect Conference, I am pleased to bring you today's webinar, which is part of the ADA Accelerator Series. ADA Accelerator is a new online on-demand program specifically designed to provide financial, leadership, and work-life balance tools that can help you achieve your long-term goals. Today we'll be discussing new developments in the state of student debt, repayment options, and how to create an overall debt payoff strategy. Leading us today is Alex Maslack. Alex manages business development and partnerships for Laurel Road, the ADA's endorsed student loan refinancing program. He has over eight years of experience in the student loan industry and has helped thousands of borrowers determine their optimal repayment strategy. Alex has a degree in economics and finance from Bentley University. Thanks for being here with us today, Alex. Take it away. Yeah, thank you for having me, um, and thanks for the introduction. I'm definitely excited to be here. Um, as you mentioned, Laurel Road's been working with the ADA uh, for quite a while now, uh, just about five years. Um, and Laurel Road as a company has uh, been participating in the student loan refinancing marketplace um, since 2013. So we were one of the first companies to start doing this. Um, and also, you know, over the years have been uh, the lender to most focus on healthcare professionals. Um, and I think that's a lot of what's led to this great partnership with the ADA. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the student loan marketplace uh, to start, certainly touch on the CARES Act and how that's, in, um, how that's implicated a lot of borrowers who are, have federal loans and, and how they're dealing with their loans during COVID. Um, we'll delve into some of the federal repayment options um, and how they compare to what we do at Laurel Road um, with student loan refinancing. Um, certainly no one-size-fits-all approach to student loan repayment, um, so we'll start to give you an idea of, you know, what type of people should be looking at uh, federal options versus um, private refinancing options. Um, and then the back half of the presentation, we'll kind of talk more holistically about um, debt overall, you know, uh, what goes into your credit score, how should you strategically approach repaying your debt. Um, we'll, we'll wrap things up with, with those ideas from a higher level. Certainly feel free to type in any questions into the chat box. We'll, we're happy to address them throughout the presentation um, and should be some time for questions at the end of the session as well. So student loan repayment options, very unique debt marketplace. I'm gonna start out on the federal side, things like public service loan forgiveness, um, the COVID response um, before transitioning into the private side of repayment, which is what we do at Laurel Road. Next slide, please. So uh, COVID-19, a uh, federal program response, um, as many of you know, in March, the CARES Act passed, and a big part of that um, had to do with federal student loans. So about 90% of all the loans in the U.S. are federal. Um, so this impacts the, the majority of student loan holders. Um, the CARES Act basically allowed people to uh, not make payments on their loans through the end of September um, and further, to not be charged interest on those loans for that period of time as well. So that was set to expire the end of September, and then as part of the executive order signed um, a few months ago, uh, President Trump extended the interest and payment holiday, uh, so 0% interest, $0 payments on all federal loans through the end of this year. Um, that's where we currently stand right now. Um, and so like I said, this impacts those with federal loans, but not private loans. So if you had a private loan, would not fall under this program, but anybody who had a direct or Bell or Perkins federal loan, um, this, this interest and in payment holiday um, automatically goes into effect. So nothing needed to be done on your end. Your loan servicer automatically puts the loan into a non-payment status. And what's really nice for anybody out there who was planning on pursuing public service loan forgiveness, these months of you know, $0 quote unquote payments do count towards the 120 necessary to achieve forgiveness. So I'll talk more about this on the next slide, but um, you know, put simply, you are progressing towards 
public service loan forgiveness without making um, any monetary payments, which is a really nice benefit. More info on the program can be found at the URL at the bottom of the screen here. Okay, so just a, a little bit more on public service loan forgiveness. Most people have a you know, pretty good sense of what this program entails. It's talked about really frequently by your financial aid office when you're in school. Um, basically says if you work at a nonprofit or government entity for 10 years, at the end of that time, if there's anything remaining on the loan, it's gonna get forgiven totally tax-free. So there's no uh, tax implication whatsoever. It's wiped clean off your balance sheet, um, free and clear. Um, Four boxes you need to check in order to set yourself up for this forgiveness. Number one, uh, only federal direct loans are eligible. Uh, so no private loans would qualify for this program. That's important to keep in mind. Um, and then you need to be enrolled in an income-driven repayment plan in order to pursue public service loan forgiveness. So you, I'll talk more on the next slide about income-driven repayment, um, but those are the plans that have you make payments based on your income rather than your loan amount. And then obviously work full time at a nonprofit, so that's a 501c3 or a government entity, either would qualify for this program. Um, and it's 120 monthly payments. So you can't accelerate these, you can't pay extra in a month and get there sooner. Um, it needs to be 120 months. They don't need to be sequential though. So if you left the public sector, came back, you pick up right where you left off progress wise. Um, I do think there's a lot of misconception about this program that you need to work in a rural or underserved area. That's not the case. Um, but there has been proposed legislation uh, to eliminate this program um, at a couple different points over the years. So remains to be seen um, what happens long term. Uh, my recommendation, if you qualify and you think you're a good fit, by all means, set yourself up. Um, to pursue the forgiveness, but just keep a very close eye on the legislative ongoings. If you know, things changed, um, you know, they eliminated the program, be prepared to pivot uh, to an alternate repayment strategy, essentially. Next slide, please. So we've broken down the, the three different income-driven repayment options here. They all have some nuance amongst them, but, um, you know, general concept remains the same from program to program. They're having you pay based on your income and family size as opposed to what you owe. So instead of paying based on your you know, quarter million dollars worth of debt, you're gonna pay based on your, um, your income, you know, and especially for a resident, uh, certainly. Um, but even you know, an associate just starting out practicing, you know, maybe your income isn't what it will be in five years. Um, and, and so you know, a monthly payment um, you know, on your quarter million dollars of debt might be a financial burden. These income-driven repayment programs can be a really nice transitionary period from school, um, you know, kind of get your financial feet under you, um, and then possibly look to refinance at a later point, assuming you aren't pursuing any forgiveness. And these programs do have a forgiveness component built in and of themselves. So if you pay for either 20 or 25 years, depending on the program, at the end of that time, anything remaining gets forgiven. The caveat with this forgiveness is it is taxable. So theoretically, you pay for 20 years, you get, you know, 100 grand forgiven, it's as though you earned an extra 100 grand in that tax year and you'd have to pay a tax bill on it. So it doesn't, you know, absolutely doesn't negate its value totally, but it's, it's a consideration for sure. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to transition a bit to um, the alternative to all those federal programs. So if you're sitting there saying, you know, I'm not pursuing any forgiveness, I'm comfortable making a full monthly payment, I just want to retire this debt as economically as possible, you know, potentially in a short period of time, you know, but certainly with as little interest as possible. Oftentimes refinancing is the best avenue to do so. So the idea here is we at Laurel Road um, would look at your financial situations. So we're gonna look at your credit, we're gonna look at your income, we're gonna look at all your debts across the board. And based on those factors, we'll make you rate offers, um, which in a lot of cases, most cases, frankly, for dentists, um, are gonna be a good deal lower than a typical federal student loan rate. So a federal loan, you know, from dentistry school, you're probably looking at six and a half, seven percent weighted average interest rate. Our average rate for a dentist, you know, probably more in the four to four and a half percent range. So a pretty good spread there. Um, and so what we would do is pay off your loans, give you a new loan, um, lower interest rate. Um, so that's obviously the big benefit of getting that lower rate, but um, 
You'll also have the ability to uh, select your payment term. So we have five, seven, 10, 15, and 20 year loans. You can choose whichever one you want. Um, and then uh, you can also effectively consolidate your loans. So if you have some federal debt, some private loans, you know, a number of different federal servicers, you can lump those all together into one big loan um, with that lower rate. Um, but it's not an all or nothing decision, which I think is worth pointing out. You don't have to refinance all of your loans in order to do this. You can pick and choose, just refinance maybe the higher rate ones, leave the lower rate ones as is, um, that's completely fine. Um, and really nice benefit that the ADA has negotiated on your behalf, uh, we give all members a quarter point off of your interest rate, so long as you're a member in good standing. So, you know, if you came to us off the street as a non-member, we were going to give you four and a half percent. Because you were affiliated with the ADA, uh, your rate will drop to four and a quarter. Um, and a quarter point, you know, when you owe a quarter million dollars, can easily save you an additional three, four thousand dollars over the life of the loan. Next slide, please. So when, when does this make sense? I started to allude to it here. Um, you know, refinancing is for folks who are looking to lower the lifetime cost of this loan. So uh, those income-driven, you know, for, forbearance type of programs, uh, loan forgiveness, if those aren't in your wheelhouse, uh, not, not something that, you know, seems particularly attractive for your given situation, that's when you should look to refinancing. Generally, you know, order of operations here is you're gonna have federal loans in, in all likelihood coming out of school. Evaluate those federal options first. I mean, you can use income-driven repayment the first couple of years out of school, potentially. Um, you know, like I said, maybe pay off some high rate credit card debt or, you know, save to purchase a home, um, you know, minimize your monthly payment during that period of time. And then uh, once you are a bit more financially stable, look to refinance then. Um, lock in that lower rates and, and hopefully save a good deal of money over the life of the loan. Um, so what are the things that we look for um, as a lender in a borrower? Um, strong credit history, um, you know, reasonable debt to income ratio. I think it might be overstated on here that it's low. Uh, very few people have a low debt to income ratio. Um, but we basically want to make sure that you have enough income on a monthly basis to comfortably cover your student loan payment. That's what we're looking for in that debt to income ratio. Um, and then obviously stable income as well. So uh, dentists, you know, by and large, um, very employable, low unemployment rates and therefore low default rates on debt. Um, and that's a big part of why we're able to offer you, you know, the low rates that we do. Um, we're, we're very confident you're able to pay this loan back um, and that's where that, that low rate comes from. We, we, you know, have a good deal of confidence that we're gonna get our money back and therefore, you know, are able to charge that lower rate. So you can actually check your rate, um, just get preliminary rates with no impact on your credit. By the time I'm done talking here in the next 10 minutes or so, uh, just at laurelroad.com slash ADA, we'll do a soft credit inquiry. Um, you'll answer five minutes worth of questions and you'll see where you stand rate-wise. It's, it's very easy. Um, totally online process um, and worth checking out. Next slide, please. Okay, so now I'm going to start to transition into, you know, debt overall, uh, rather than just focusing on student loans, you know, let's talk more holistically of how you should be looking at your debt and your credit score um, and how they impact your financial life. Um, so use a loan repayment strategy that works for you. Um, and there's, there's different ways um, that you can look to pay down all different kinds of loans. Um, so uh, debt avalanche. So with debt avalanche, you're basically applying whatever funds are left over um, each month. So let's say you've got 200 bucks each month um, and you want to you're going to want to put that towards your highest interest rate first. So the highest interest rate loans, those are what's costing you the most. And so in an ideal world, you want to retire those as soon as possible. And so taking those extra dollars each month, putting them towards uh, the highest rate debt, that's actually what's economically going to save you the most money um, in paying down your loans. Um, alternatively, there's an approach called debt snowball. Um, and that's really more of a personal motivation tactic where you're, you're using the extra dollars each month to try and pay down your smallest loans 
And so that you just, you know, you start making progress, ticking off loans as you go, um, and that can be a real motivator for a lot of people. Um, it doesn't have to be a one or the other type of strategy. There's a hybrid approach um, that, that can be implemented, but, you know, just trying to give folks some ideas of how you can, um, I guess, effectively from an economic standpoint, pay off your debt, as well as personal motivation. Um, I know it's not easy to take those extra dollars at the end of the month and, and put them towards a loan rather than, you know, uh, a night out or, or planning a trip, um, but it, it definitely can benefit you in the long run doing so. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, know your credit score. Um, what is a credit score? Uh, what is FICO? FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. Um, and there's three credit bureaus out there. Um, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. Um, each of them is going to have a FICO score for you. Um, and your a FICO score is basically a measure of um, how credit worthy a borrower are you? How likely are you to repay debt um, is what the FICO score measures. A um, couple, you know, bullet points, things to keep in mind. They are, it is, uh, your FICO score is sensitive to using your credit cards a lot. So they generally don't want to see the credit bureaus uh, putting a ton of money on a credit card. Um, even if you're paying it off, if you had a $10,000 limit and you spent nine grand each month, that's going to reflect negatively um, on your score. Um, they are uh, fairly forgiving in isolated uh, late payment scenarios, um, but if you do it over time, a number of times, it's really going to drag on your score. Um, fortunately, they've become more forgiving on small dollar collection amounts. So uh, I'm sure if it hasn't happened to you, it's happened to a close friend or family member. You forget to pay your last cable bill or utility bill when you move. Um, that amount gets sent to collections before it could really drag down your credit score. Um, the bureaus are now becoming a little bit more flexible and understanding um, on those things you just forget about. So uh, getting to know your credit score and, and what's taken into consideration, how, how do they calculate it? Um, the biggest factor in your FICO score um, is payment history. So making sure that you pay all of your bills on time, not just your credit cards, is paramount. Um, put them on you know, automatic payment, direct deposit, as much as possible. Uh, not only is it going to make your life easier, it's going to ensure you don't miss any payments. Um, we at Laurel Road even offer a quarter point rate discount um, for making automatic payments from a checking account. So it'll make your life easier, it'll save you money, um, and it'll keep your credit history strong. Um, one factor that goes into your credit that I think a lot of people are unaware of, um, I was before I started working in lending, um, is how much of your credit uh, line that you utilize. So I, I was just mentioning it, but you know, again, use the credit card example here. You've got a $10,000 line of credit, um, for an optimal credit score, they don't want to see you use more than 30% of that $10,000 line, so three grand a month. Um, if you find yourself using more than that each month, you should call your credit card company and ask for an extension of your line of credit. So maybe go from ten to $20,000, and that'll give you some more wiggle room in terms of what percentage of the line uh, you use each month. You want to keep that utilization rate below 30%. Um, really easy steps people can take to improve their credit without paying down any loans or, um, you know, trying to dig yourself out of a, a tough position. Um, this is an easy thing to do uh, to improve your score. Uh, length of credit history is the third factor. The longer you've had an account, you have your accounts open, uh, the more favorably it's going to reflect on your score. Obviously, this is just something that kind of improves as you go along in your life. Um, so you can expect that to happen as you progress in your career. Um, new credit applications. Um, so the bureaus don't want to see a lot of um, a lot of inquiries in a short period of time. So they don't want to see you go out and apply for a credit card, a mortgage, an auto loan, all in the same week. Um, they do give you some flexibility to price shop. So you could apply for you know six mortgages in a week. And that's only going to count as one inquiry because uh, they can tell you're just price shopping. Um, but, but try to sort of stagger uh, the different types of loans, the inquiries that come along with them um, as, as you're progressing in your career. Definitely check for errors. Um, I, I just caught one on my own 
uh, credit report, for example, um, they, they do happen from time to time, you know, a lender misreporting something to the credit bureau. Um, so it was on the last slide, do a free credit check each, each year. Um, it's, it's free to do, freecreditreport.com. Um, it is very much worth uh, checking on from time to time. Um, if, you know, really in any circumstance, if, if you're planning to continue to take out debt for a practice, for a car, for a mortgage, as many people are, make sure you're, you're up to date on your, your credit score. Um, and so I, I'm going to turn it back over in a second, but just want to say my own personal thank you to everybody for joining. Um, really appreciate it. I know student loans and debt overall is nobody's favorite topic to discuss, um, but hopefully we're able to provide a little bit of guidance here today um, to alleviate some of the, the stress that comes along with it. So highly encourage everybody to check out um, our partnership with the ADA. You can get more information on that at laurelroad.com slash ADA um, and find your rates. Uh, in a matter of minutes. So uh, with that, I will turn it back over, but thank you again for having me, um, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for that overview, Alex. To Alex and everyone watching, on behalf of the ADA, thank you.